So here we're looking at the human brain. This is the front and this is the back. And we notice that the brain is arranged in two cerebral hemispheres. This is the right cerebral hemisphere and this is the left cerebral hemisphere. And if we look at the brain from the side, we can see that there's three major sections. This top part, this whole area here, this very large area is the cerebrum. On this model, the browner part is the cerebellum. And this part in the middle is the brain stem. And actually here on this model, we notice this bit here. And this actually represents the pituitary gland at the base of the brain. And on this model, these white lines are various nerves. These are called cranial nerves taking information into the brain and in some cases taking motor impulses away from the brain. And it's actually helpful if we look at the different lobes of the brain now. And I want to do this with the aid of this model which gives us some colours. Here we see the same brain, but this time with some nice colours in it. Again we have the front and the back, the cerebrum, the cerebellum, this time in grey, and here the brain stem is in two different colours for two different sides. But let's start by thinking about the major lobes of the brain. In orange here we have the frontal lobes and of course the frontal lobes are on both sides. So this is the right frontal lobe here and this is the left frontal lobe here. Then in this model, in blue, this large lobe is the parietal lobe. The yellow lobe is the temporal lobe. And at the back, in green, is the visual part of the brain, the occipital lobe. And of course, these lobes are represented on both sides of the brain. Underneath again we see the cerebellum and we can also notice that the midbrain is in three sections. And we can also notice that the brain stem is in three sections. The top part is the midbrain, this part is the pons and this lower part is the medulla oblongata. And the medulla oblongata in life is continuous with the spinal cord. Now between the frontal lobe and the parietal lobe, this line up here is called the central sulcus. Because the brain, the surface of the brain rises and falls. It rises in these raised areas that would be called a gyrus, collectively they're called the gyri. And the brain dips down into these small valleys, these small dips. A small dip is called a sulcus, collectively they're called the sulci. So the brain raises in gyri, dips into sulci. Raises in gyri, dips into sulci. And the larger valley, the larger sulcus dividing the frontal lobe and the parietal lobe is called the central sulcus. And it's very interesting to look at the functional areas of the brain and that's what this model does on the other side. So we see that this red area is actually in the frontal lobe and this is called the motor cortex. So this gyrus here represents the motor cortex and that's where the movement for the body is initiated. And you might have come across the physiology that tells us that it is the left side of the brain that controls the right side of the body. And it's the right side of the brain that controls the left side of the body. So this is the motor cortex here 
in the frontal lobe. Then we have the central sulcus. And behind this, at the start of the parietal lobe, this area here is the sensory cortex. So this strip of sensory cortex just here, on the left side of the brain, is detecting sensation from the right side of the body. This strip of sensory cortex here, in the right side of the brain, is detecting sensation from the left side of the body. When we look round to the back, we see the occipital lobe. And the occipital lobe is responsible for vision. This is where we see. So light comes into the eyes at the front, it's transmitted in the optic nerves, and the image is actually generated in the occipital lobe at the back of the brain. And then we also see some other areas highlighted on this model. So here we have the temporal lobe. And this area here is the auditory area. That is where we hear with. That is the hearing part of the brain. And we also notice another area here identified on the frontal lobes. And this is called the frontal eye field. This is what moves the external eye muscles, so we can look in a particular direction.